Everybody ready? Yep. Mm-hmm. I mean, I guess. <laughs> Hello, friends. Did you know that Tom Ario from Slayer had to have a metal plate put in his neck from headbanging too hard? That's literally metal. It is. Tom who? Tom Ario from Slayer. He had to have a plate put into his neck? Yeah, from headbanging. I'm just going to... So what if someone uh-huh. was to put metal plates on all of their appendages? Would those appendages then be stronger in general? No, it's because he did so much damage to his body and his spinal column from rocking out while playing his bass guitar. Okay. That that he had to like the, the surgical procedure to correct that so that he could walk and function involved putting a metal plate in his neck. <laughs> yeah, science oh. fiction movies are really just overselling that whole cyborg thing. Yeah. There is room for like the implementation of these stronger things into the endoskeleton. But in this context, so much damage has been done that this alternative is better. Right. Just doing it without it is going to wear on different aspects of your body, that sort of thing. It didn't restore his ability to headbang. In fact, right. he's, he just he doesn't do that anymore. <laughs> but he also doesn't just have a head that flops around. Right. So what would you say if you wanted to, like, say if you wanted to have the ability to bust down stainless steel doors, possibly of, of an enclosure that you've been locked in your entire existence, would first off you know genetically altering yourself so that you have you're much physically stronger in general and then bracing those bones and muscles with well-placed metal plates that's not going to be effective no it's no, not. no 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 that's that's not going to get you where you want to go what you really want to do is just modify the incinerator to give yourself uh blowtorch attachments like oxyacetylene welding <gasps> torches kind of oh. coming out from your uh, wait what the fuck am i okay yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no. Stop, uh, that... a much more badass <laughs> alternative would be installing some kind of cyberpunk railgun into your arm okay and then just using that to just blow holes in the thing that you're trying to escape from see the trick is is to blow a hole into the inner wall without perforating the outer wall because then we all lose atmosphere it's true well yeah i mean i'm not affected by that anymore <laughs> i'm sorry what wait a- do you have gills do you have space no. skills? No, I don't space need oxygen skills. anymore. <laughs> I like space skills. <laughs> I, I also like space skills. And <laughs> Do you filter oxygen out of solar radiation? I don't use it anymore. <laughs> He's living purely on prana. <laughs> yeah, I don't actually have blood in the, the way that you have it. Just have hate? I just have like a, it's like a thin gel or glaze that just stays put in my system. Gross. How do your cells get... Nutrition. Uh, I only exist for three hours a day. Ah. It's a very gelid system. We, really. we might want to make that shorter, guys. We might want to like cut that in half. What's that? We might want to cut that in half. You know, li- limit what he can do in in the window of his existence. Yeah, it's amazing how much you get done. It's true. Just having once a week a three hour existence and oh no no I'm always in the yeah I, I think because we turned him into lawnmower man oh fuck god that was a real bad idea guys he he functionally has infinite time <sighs> yeah but the meat component only exists for the time it takes to record an episode of Brainworms each week listeners I'm I'm sorry that we have unleashed Kane upon you our bad <laughs> it's a really stupid apocalypse but you know i mean no more or less stupid than any of the other apocalypses we're staring down actually this one will at least be faster yeah oh my god i know what happened kane eventually creates a time portal goes back in time and makes the mayan calendar the mayan calendar was a psyop well like every artificial intelligence don't he's bring going up a bad to list. Take over the world. Oh, man. I don't want to take over the world. I, I would like to clarify that. I don't want to take over the world. Now, this this reminds me of one particular thing. Listeners, everyone act now. We were talking not about, like 10 minutes ago about doing a follow-up with Time of the Stones and Kane doesn't want to do it. Long live the new flesh. Everyone speak out in the comments. Did he say something? Guys, I couldn't tell. There were words in there, but I don't know what any of them Okay, meant. good. That's pretty common for Chris. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You said railgun? Yeah, yeah, railgun. Okay, cool. Thanks. All right. Let's get what, what are we doing today? You know, guys, I was I was looking at the uh, the schematics. Is there any reason why my recording room is right next to Kane's pod? It just worked out that way. It just worked out that way. It, yeah. So that if it's... he were to fire off a railgun, I would be the first one to just just coincidence? Okay. It's less that your room is closest to Kane's and more that it's the furthest away from David's and mine, so that we can't hear the things that you do in the night. <laughs> 
Ah. <laughs> yeah, think of it as the quiet room that's in both of the <laughs> digital realms that you exist in. Don't, don't, don't tell people about that. <laughs> don't tell people what, Chris, that in two separate, completely separate, only one crossover member has shown up. Internet voice chat <laughs> programs. The groups that you belong to have a separate channel that they can throw you in when you talk. <laughs> and they want you to stop it's, doing the talking. It's not true. It's lies. <laughs> Sometimes Chris just needs a time out. It's he true. Does. <laughs> I do, however, um, I, I got to tell you, Chris, a friend of mine, he listens to the show. Hey, Wes, thanks for listening. Yo. He did specify that you are his favorite brain worm. Nice. Aww. I mean, he's my favorite brain worm, too. Oh, uh, I do want to contrast that with on our most recent YouTube video. There's a comment that just says, shut up, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> that might be why you're Wes's favorite. <laughs> For, so it's real quick. Yeah. I don't mind being the butt of jokes. So just let it rip. You don't need to like follow it up with. Oh, and by the way, we actually like and David, I do appreciate that. But don't worry. No, it's going to be fine. Make all the jokes you want. I mean, I'm going to kill all of you anyway. So none of this matters. And I'm just being earnest and also wanted an opportunity to name drop my buddy and thank him for listening. Hell yeah. We only name drop Patreon supporters. This is the episode that we do that. Yeah, David. So take that name back. Just suck it back. <laughs> I guess if I say it in reverse, it cancels yeah, yeah. it. Uh, so, so. There we go. Yeah. All right. The first episode of the month, which means it's the time that we acknowledge our lovely patrons. God bless you all for. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's not bring that guy into it. That's fair. Yeah, you know, people keep saying, I got to ask God for forgiveness, but I never did nothing to him. <laughs> Joe, will you just just say the names of the people that punished themselves? <laughs> and then pay us to punish them more. <laughs> yeah, thank you for enabling this fuckball douche nonsense. Gene Donnie, David Taylor, Dara, Patrick less Neanderthal than Dara Holleen. <laughs> Oof boots. Oof boots! <laughs> and thanks again to our good friend Dan for continuing to pump money into our Ko-Fi account every now and then. That's amazing. Yeah, thanks, man. I'm not taking my shirt off. Oof, you should take your shirt off. Sounds there. like a George Lucas Star Wars name. Maybe it is. Yeah. You don't know. I mean, you would know if you hung out in twitch.tv uh, slash count underscore canula. Wait, what? Can you say that again? <laughs> twitch.tv slash count underscore canula. Just, just to clarify, twitch.tv <laughs> slash count underscore canula. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If Chris hung out there. He would see all sorts of awesome people. Like Oof Boots. Like Oof Boots. I met. <laughs> yeah. Fuck you, Chris. <laughs> you know, no one ever really sees Oof Boots. It's more of like... You can't, a, like, you can't make jokes because you're not there, buddy. So just go ahead and uh, just sit quietly, wait your turn. You're like a child that wanders into the <laughs> middle of the movie. You know, Kane, though, if Chris does start showing up, you're going to have to create a whole new chat channel. <laughs> 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 I have moderator control. I can exactly. I can just yeah. time him out. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. And then I'd have to create a Discord channel. I already did. It's called the trash can. He randomly goes in there. He <laughs> randomly goes in there and does his thing. <laughs> So, so having thanked our patrons, I guess we should talk about what we're reading this week. Nah, <sighs> I think we're good. We thanked our patrons. That's all they're getting from me. I'm going to jump in the furnace. No, no, no. We have to read a book. That's what we're here for. Ugh. The shittiest gayus ever. <laughs> wait, wait is, it, is it the book with the stones in it? It is. It's Time of the Stones no. by oh. computer programmer, mad scientist. We don't know that he's a mad scientist. Don't sue us. Fred Rothganger. Wait, can you sue people for accusing someone of being a mad scientist? I don't know. People are weird. He's not a confirmed mad scientist, yeah, we, but we he have may no well evidence. be a perturbed engineer. Yeah. <laughs> perturbed engineer. He does apparently build tools to do massive neural simulations on supercomputers. Really? Where's he located? I don't have that uh, on information. Earth came and you're on the moon. I'm not. Always on the moon. Mostly on the moon. Have you forgotten? I just told you I am in the internet. So, like, <laughs> yeah, you can find him. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, you can track him down. He's out there. What was his name again? Uh, Fred Rothganger. Fred Rothganger? Yes, Fred Rothganger. All right. Awesome. Thanks. But before we dive back into Time of the Stones, which is a weird adventure, I should remind you to go to wegiveyoubrainworms.com. Wait, dot what? Dot com. Dot com? No, dot com, Kane. Oh. It's not com. It's com. <laughs> God, learn how to say dot com correctly. Yeah. yeah. Wow. When you guys just <laughs> made that in joke, I just had this nice warm feeling of comfort of like nothing's going to change we're always going to be this happy i'll give you a nice warm feeling of comfort (laughs) and is that is that what in jokes are it's like we'll always have this it'll never go away yeah this is almost what it's like to have friends (laughs) anyway (laughs) uh yeah go to that website we give you brainworms.com where you can join that lovely list of patrons supporting the show, which is a cool thing for you to do. How many shows does that Patreon invest in? Currently two. The Brainworms <gasps> podcast. There's two? And the Butcher Block Horror podcast. Oh, that's amazing that the patrons that we have are supporting two podcasts. Right? And we keep bouncing ideas back and forth that might be more in the future. You never know. If anything, it's like two birds, one stone right two your dollar girls has, uh, your donation cup. dollar has more travel has more value when you like get one us. bird in the hand is worth two in the bush get your hands out of my bush cane huh. for less than the cost of a cup of coffee a day <laughs> you too can sponsor weird ass podcasters <laughs> it's true <laughs> you, you can sponsor cane putting his hand in my bush <laughs> i don't do that you can be responsible for everything that we produce including but not limited to tasteful nudes <laughs> including side dong side dong yeah and side dong yeah indeed hashtag side yep. dong hashtag, hashtag side, side dong. dong a buddy of mine that does a monster madness podcast has now used side dong and actually messaged nice. me to get a definition on it so i gave him the definition he was like all right cool i used it right <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> Hashtag side dog. <laughs> also from we give you brainworms.com, you can join our Funky Fresh Discord server. Is it Funky Fresh? Do we need to change the name of it? I don't know. Whatever. It's pretty funky and it's pretty fresh. And that's pretty cool. You can interact directly with us. We'll, you know, screech at you incoherently like we like to do. Uh, if you're a Spotify listener or a Stitcher, like if you're listening to us on a podcast Stitcher? host. It's a, it's a real thing. It's very popular. It's where people listen to podcasts. It would be very helpful to us if you find our YouTube channel and like, subscribe, and click the bell. Because we're uh, we're trying to get those sweet YouTube subscribers. So we can make YouTube bucks. If someone was to take a look at the Brainworms Presents Discord channel, there have been some changes. Oh, that's exciting. I can't wait to check that <laughs> out by going to wegiveyoubrainworms.com. Yeah, yeah, go to brainworms.com and then click on the Discord link. It's a permanent invitation, and that will give you access to Brainworms Presents Funky Fresh Discord server. Nice. Guys, this intro's up to almost 20 minutes. What? Fuck off. It is. <laughs> Shit. Okay, yeah, we should stop. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I guess yeah. I guess this means that there's there's nothing left to do, but yep. we have to dive into this goddamn book. Oh, shit. Yeah, let's go. Let's do it, David. Let's read the book. All right. The village took shape as the day wore on. Children ran and played while women prepared their homes and worked their crafts. The tents were conical, made with a circle of long poles supporting a sewn hide covering. Do we really need to describe tents? Like Like a long pole. Nice. The reader knows what a... They're going to have a vision in their head of a tent. It's fine. These are clearly supposed to be like teepees, conical tents. Um, Oh no, I get it. I get it. So that's great. You know, sure, that's cool. They eat dogs. I wonder what the tents are made of, being yeah. as they're so high. Hopefully hide. it's dog fur. That'd be awesome. And if I ever see a film of this, the fucking teepees better just be like patchwork pelts of various yeah. dogs. Like recognizable, like Dalmatian fur. And right. Fucking just, yeah. Crudely sewn together like a Frankenstein. And they don't remove the skull so like you see the puppy faces. <laughs> I mean, that's just a little... Uh, unlikely like i get where you're coming from and it's visually interesting but it's just impractical they might put a head on top of the door opening and like different dog breeds could demonstrate where you are in your uh social ladder yeah yeah i think that makes sense sure 
We should try to finish another chapter before. <laughs> Why? Please tell me. Tell me what we're going to gain with another chapter, Joe. Well, let's find out. From time to time, Elect Joe appeared among the bustle. Elect Joe. He slipped furtive glances at her, then whisked away with the labor of carrying tools and bedding. For the gift of reconnecting with humans, Susan would gladly have slept with him every night for the rest of his life. I'm sorry, oh what? It would be so nice to make love again, to feel that touch and know she was making someone else happy too. Well, that didn't take very long. If Not only long she could all. take on a physical body. No. These people would do anything she asked, even if it corrupted their innocence and raped this beautiful land for resources. <sighs> Through their the hands, fuck is she happening? could resurrect nanotechnology and truly become the goddess they imagined. Nanotech could destroy all life on Earth. Just, just have tantric sex, Jesus. Susan stepped nope, away raw from- dog. <laughs> raw dog it, raw dog it right into that <laughs> robot, baby. Just mash your business up against the crystal pyramid, it's fine. Also, previously, there was a point when she said something, and Electra, like, bowed his head, and the book said, like, she put her hand on his shoulder and said, like, what's wrong, friend? Or so, I, I think. It specifically said it was a weightless hand, like, oh, oh, oh. she's a hologram. Gotcha. Susan it's stepped like away from the Blade study. Runner. It is a little Blade Runner-y, yeah. Yeah. This guy mined so much. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're just hitting every trope on the way down the trope <laughs> tree. <laughs> Susan stepped away from the stone. Its edges appeared as thin red beams hovering a few centimeters above the ground. Each triangle framed a window through which people could see into the virtual world. She walked over to the console. Virtual world. The tablet was a meter wide and 60 centimeters tall, tilted at a comfortable angle on an elegant metallic stand. Real quick, David, can you break that down for me into inches? <laughs> um, no. <laughs> because, uh... I benefited from the U.S. educational system, and therefore I hear meter, and I'm like, okay, that's kind of like a yard, and that's about where it breaks down. <laughs> like, that's, that's... <laughs> a little further stood her beloved old farmhouse. A tent had gone up half inside the building, covering the front door. Oh, I bet it went up. <laughs> the villagers could not see or feel the house, but the obstacles were real for her. What? So, apparently, somewhere inside of her holographic creation, there's a farmhouse that only she can see that exists only for her, and if they put up things in the real world, there's still obstacles for her getting around. Okay. I think Fred might actually think that, like, the virtual world is something that consumes space yeah that's interesting yeah i think fred wants to fuck robots <laughs> i no longer consider him to be a threat i don't think his ai is going to be dangerous it's just going to make sexual relationships a lot easier you know <laughs> someone should tell this guy about real dolls sex robot sex robot <laughs> what does he want sex robot sex robot Sex robot, sex robot. He wants sex. <laughs> We're just going to do this for the rest of the day. I can, right. Do you want to get down? <laughs> I think basically this book is striking me as sort of the budget version of Snow Crash. Yeah, yeah. This whole thing could have been handled very interestingly by someone like neil stevenson mm -hmm. but it turns out that uh it was handled by a guy that plays with his warhammer dolls and gets horny for ai <laughs> <laughs> yeah fred rothganger is not neil stevenson that's what He's i learned not. yeah <laughs> um <laughs> people were turning the front yard into a disaster zone but people were good better to have friends than a nice yard inside Narrow wood stairs led to a pair of attic bedrooms. One of the doors opened to Susan's inner sanctum, a place filled with memories. Pushed against the near wall was the bed she had shared with her owner, Anand, for so many years. Dresses hung in an open closet. There was the silk chiang sam her creator Rose had given to celebrate her rite of passage. There was the translucent nightgown she wore for Anand the first time they made love. Even now, she ached to feel him again. 
Opposite the closet stood his sister's antique dresser, decorated with glitter and stickers topped with an oval mirror set in scrolled woodwork. What the <laughs> fuck is happening yeah. with this book? We're robot sympathizing, I guess. Like, I guess? Mm, there are so many confusing things here. Was she conscious for a thousand years? Uh, <sighs> Because if you're just alone and isolated with nothing but your memories for a thousand years, uh -huh. I don't care if you are a hyper-intelligent program, an AI, you're going fucking mad. Right, which would make for a better book. It would. We're also assuming that Susan experiences time the same way that humans do. I mean, that's all questions that would be interesting to bring up. Or answer. Mm -hmm. But no, no, instead we're bringing up that people got headaches. Well, here's aspirin. Okay, we're yeah, done. And, and she lives in a simulation that is also taking up space in the real world. For some yeah. reason. Yeah, it's a simulation that only like, she can see, But apparently. it's still in real space, not... But it, yeah. Okay, so hang on. So is she... And I'm just going to go with, with cyberpunk terminology here, because... Cyberpunk actually talks about this, but in a way more interesting way. Right. Is she just an engram of a human consciousness that was copied over into this virtual world? Or is she an AI constructed from scratch? I'm thinking she's an AI constructed from scratch, um, but we'd have to read Susan, I think, to really get that answer. I'm willing to go there. I, I want to know the origins. <laughs> Well, the origin story is available for you on Amazon.com for only three ninety nine. Yeah. You will be fueling more of Fred's attempts to take <laughs> over the world. If he builds an AI, he's going to have sex with it. I think we're safe. Yeah. His entire goal is to build an AI to fuck. That's it. <laughs> Do you think Fred walks into like arcades with a big trench coat on and flashes the arcade machines before running out? Yeah. I hadn't before, but I do now. <laughs> I do think that, but he wears the, the wizard robe that he's wearing in his <laughs> author photo. And he just, he just lifts it up and waggles his junk at Ms. Pac-Man and then just giggles and runs out. <laughs> <laughs> guy at the counter like, should we stop him from doing that no he's fine he's not hurting anybody just let him go <laughs> and the manager behind them has like a big thing of gasoline pouring like uh no it won't matter in about 24 hours <laughs> opposite the closet stood his sister's antique dresser decorated with glitter and stickers topped with an oval mirror set in scrolled woodwork because <sighs> girls love glitter and stickers right that's right i mean i love glitter and stickers yeah i like glitter and stickers too i like stickers yeah but like that's such an entry level like what would a girl like on her dresser right we don't know how old sister is like she could be nine that's fair no it doesn't matter because like i get it now fred is an incel and the path of least resistance for him getting laid is not improving himself or becoming an interesting person it's creating a sex robot. I don't want sex to robot, assume things robot. about his character, but he is kind of giving off some vibes. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to say for certain that that's true. I, I'm not attacking Fred Rothganger. Yeah. I don't know him. But there are definitely some, uh, some neckbeardy sorts of things yeah. skirting right on the edge of, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah, there, there's some energy there. Yeah. Sister never actually gave it to Susan. It just seemed to always be there. All a computer simulation, carefully constructed from their life together. Light from the window fell on a metal briefcase in the middle of the floor. The case lay open, with a screen set in the lid. The bottom held an old-fashioned keyboard, a big red button, and some cables. <sighs> I bet Chris's bottom could hold a whole keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> a white envelope rested on the keyboard. She had read every message from Anand a hundred times, but this last precious letter remained sealed. On it, he had scrawled, Do not open this, ever. <laughs> what? <laughs> Fucking what? <laughs> At the end of the book, she opens it and bees just come out. Bees! <laughs> not the bees! I told you not to open it, idiot. <laughs> Why would you write it? Why did you write it? <laughs> How did you write it? Time was a matter of perspective. To her, little more than a year had passed since he died, at her side but beyond reach. To anyone else, the period of mourning ended over a thousand years ago. Well, at least we answered that question. 
Yeah, but did we? Because she also specifically said that she remembered people 600 years ago or whatever. Yeah. And had scared them off. So, like, to her perspective, was that just earlier in the afternoon? Because if that's the case, then, okay, well, from her perspective, he died just a little over a year ago. So maybe it was like a few months back. Right. So yeah, she wouldn't go crazy after a year in isolation, but she would start to feel pretty bummed out. Why does an AI need to mourn? Well, because she has feels. She's an <laughs> AI with feels. That's what makes her a better sex robot. Sex robot, sex robot. Sex robot, sex robot. Sex robot. <laughs> God fucking damn it. <laughs> Is Do you want to get down? <laughs> I'm out. His ashes spread from the glade into the surrounding soil. His atoms were in the living wood of the trees. If there were such a thing as spirit, he was there with her always. She pulled his picture off the dresser, clutched it to her bosom, curled on their bed, and drifted to sleep. A voice wafted from the stone. Antikva. She grabbed Anand's pillow. Antifa? Covered that's, I've been thinking that every time I read it, yeah. Yeah, that, that's what I hear every time that gets said. Covered her head and moaned. The late night and early morning were taking their toll. She walked back to the stone and found a man dressed in feathers dancing around, thumping oh a God. skin drum with a stick. Book, no. She stepped into the center and waited. Do it. Seemed not to notice. After a few more laps, she waved her hands. Hey, I'm right here. People around them chuckled. The longer the shaman danced, the harder they laughed. The sound broke his trance. He stopped dancing and focused on her. He raised a stick decorated with feathers and shook it, producing oh a God. rattle. Fuck no. She snapped, get that thing out of my face. He said, spirit of the stone, Cantisto summons you to heal Tandra. What's wrong with her? Ancient spirit, you She can know. only be healed with sex. I don't know anything. Bring her here and let me see. Contisto stared at her in confusion. Meanwhile, a few enterprising villagers in the crowd went to fetch Tandra. They returned carrying an emaciated old woman slung in a blanket and placed her at the base of the stone. Because she's the elder. Oh, she's, she's just dead. <laughs> right. <laughs> Susan knelt next to Tandra and studied her for a few minutes. The woman had numerous small lumps and yellowish skin. She struggled to breathe. Susan spoke heavy words. Tandra is beyond the help of any magic you or I have. Sing any song. You're the piano Dance man. any dance. Yeah. I will dance with you and wish her soul a painless journey. Why? She has only a few days to live. The kind of magic that can help her takes many years to create, perhaps more than a lifetime. Then teach me how to make this magic. Susan shook her head. Some magic is too powerful. It could be turned to great evil. I will not teach it until I see that humans are ready. <sighs> I hate this. Cantisto went away scowling. Big feels, Cantisto. <laughs> Tandra's friends took her back to her tent. Susan hoped this was not a taste of things to come. Humans could suffer and die because of her choices. Near evening, the women of the village built a fire at the center of the camp. When a sufficient bed of coals was burning, they cooked the evening meal. Several game animals the men killed that day, along with vegetables the women had gathered in the forest. <sighs> mm -hmm. The whole village assembled after sunset and ate together. They built up the blaze and sang. The words lit a fire in Susan as well. They felt deep and ancient. Susan stood in the center of the stone and raised her voice. Long ago, on the land where you now live, the ancients built a mighty civilization. The name they called this place has passed from your language, the name of their time long forgotten. They were known as the Bronies. <laughs> the, vill <laughs> the villagers watched with rapt attention. This was their story, the story of their ancestors. It had been told and sung for many generations. I knew the ancients and walked among them. I saw it with my own eyes. The ancients had great power. And a lot of them believe the earth was flat, but no one likes to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> they found the remains of plants long dead buried deep in the ground and burned them. But for all their wisdom, the ancients were foolish. 
Rather than build a world that could sustain their children, they created tools that only worked as long as they had fuel to burn. As their numbers grew, so did their tools. They burned fuel faster and faster, doing ever more wondrous things, until one day it was gone. But the ancients had come to depend on their tools for everything. They could no longer go into the forest and find food like you do. Many starved, and those who survived fought over the scraps. They threw terrible weapons at each other and burned the earth. At the end, <sighs> when all hope was lost, the wisest of them came together in secret. They used the last of their power to forge the stones, so their children would not forget. I'm getting, like, Luddite vibes, which is weird coming yeah. from a guy who, wa who wants to build a sex robot. Being anti-fossil fuels is decidedly not being anti-tech. That makes sense, sure. You know, he's, he's right that it's stupid yeah. to continue to dig up fossil fuels and burn them when we have technology that could provide for exactly the same quality of life, if not a better one. Mm -hmm. it, it already exists. It just needs to be put into place. And it would absolutely see major developments in a very short amount of time if we started focusing on that so right all of the arguments about how it's not as efficient can just go suck their own dicks you have to do something yeah no i agree yeah climate change yeah. fucking killing the planet stop it <laughs> <laughs> we need this planet to live on people yeah how else are we going to keep recording this podcast that's right i mean well that's why we moved to the moon oh right yeah we we don't need this yeah it's fine <laughs> Yeah, burn the earth. We'll just yeah. warm ourselves in the fire. <laughs> It'll be great. Yep. As their numbers grew, so did their tools. Oh, I already read that bit. Yeah. How can you tell? <laughs> David, I need you to do me a favor and go back and describe their tools growing. Just read it slowly. I'm not going to do that for you, Chris. <laughs> you have let me down. I am a cruel master. <laughs> Serious Hal 9000 vibes there. A hush rustled across the group. Electio blurted, Stones? You mean there are others like this? There are seven stones around the earth, served by seven sisters. Each one has the power to remake the world, but what it becomes is in your hands. This is the dawn of a new age. The age of Aquarius. Age of Aquarius! <laughs> Let the human spirit rise from the ashes and soar again. Good morning, Antiqua. Pleaho gestured toward an empty place in front of the stone. She studied how to sit in the white gown with some measure of dignity. She carefully settled on her knees with butt on ankles. Okay, then. The elders discussed the business of the village. They considered whether to settle on Stonehill or continue their annual migration. Is anyone else getting kind of bored? I've been bored the whole fucking time. Susan caught herself <laughs> nodding off to sleep. Oh, wow. <laughs> While the rest of us had... The book is bored. <laughs> <laughs> the book is bored of itself. That's when you know it's a problem. When, when the book itself is, is trying to fall asleep, you know that you <laughs> found a real stinker, Joe. So thanks, <laughs> thanks for that. <laughs> Imagine Fred writing this as he's typing it up, like the, the text document just goes, <sighs> and he's like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> like his computer kept shutting down <laughs> and going into sleep mode while he was writing this fucking book. <laughs> Why does he keep doing that? It must be a virus. <laughs> <sighs> he watches a bunch of YouTube videos on how to stop your computer from going to sleep <laughs> on its own and nothing happens. <laughs> you know, like the computer doesn't fall asleep and he's like, oh, maybe, maybe that fixed it. And then he goes back into the writing, like the word pad and he starts typing again and he gets about a paragraph in and the, the computer just falls asleep again. <laughs> I think that that's more entertaining to talk about <laughs> than all the bullshit that Fred's writing about. It. Yeah. <laughs> this kind of reminds me of that planes, trains and automobiles point. Like, you know, if you're writing a book, here's a thought. Have a point. <laughs> I'm sure there's a point in there. Yeah. 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 I mean, we are only into chapter two, so it may happen at some point in this chapter. You know, the mm -hmm. best books that I've ever read mm -hmm. don't take 15 chapters to get good. Right. Yeah, that. Right. Clearly, this person, this writer has something to say. Like, he has a point 
some of it has to do with fucking robots. Oh, yeah. Definitely wants to fuck some robots. But he, he has a point about conservation and he's got shit that he's saying. And he's so concerned with saying it that he's forgotten that he's telling a story. <laughs> right? Like an early Heinlein novel. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Susan caught herself nodding off to sleep. She tried to cover it with a posture of deep thought. It gradually became apparent that this meeting never ended. The elders sat and talked from dawn to dusk every day. And she was the only female privileged to join the conversation. Female. <laughs> female. <laughs> she stared off at the children playing chase between the tents. If only she could be out there running too. I'm confused. Is she bound inside of the pyramid or can she like project? A... I don't know. We don't know. Does it matter? I don't think the book cares. I don't care. <laughs> All I know is is that I had m a lot more fun reading The Eye of Argon. <clears throat> yeah. And that is one of the worst books ever written. Yeah, but that falls into the category of so bad it's entertaining. Yeah. This is just boring. Yeah, kinda. Do we care enough to finish this chapter? Like, are we. Let's are... see where it's going. Okay. Let's see where <sighs> it's going. I, I'm just curious as to. <laughs> I mean, I feel you, but. Because I am having, I'm having a real hard time, like, yeah. listening to anything that you're saying. <laughs> well, we're on page 14 of the book. Chapter 3 starts on page 20, so we've got, like, six pages. Let's do it. Oh, my God. They're Kindle pages, so they're shorter than actual, like, oh, book okay. pages. And the more you complain about it, the less time David talks. It's true. All right, read, 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 read. Susan Stood. My friends, thank you for the honor of sitting among you, but I fear the ancients would not approve. They put me here to share knowledge and help you regain what was lost. Could you send your children for a few hours each morning? And anyone else who wishes to learn. On the other side of the stone, a group of women sat between the tents and worked on some craft together. Susan tapped a menu on the console and switched <sighs> to volumetric projection. She went to the side nearest the women and stepped in. A young woman looked up and noticed. She bounded over and said, Hi, I'm Revy. The other women followed. We're making clothes from the skins of animals. Mostly dogs. How can a hologram generate sound? Don't ask questions. Could you do it right here, where I can watch you? I want to learn. <laughs> Several women craned their necks around and looked at the ring of old men on the other side of the stone. One said, They don't approve of us being near when they are discussing great matters. Susan smirked. I have a plan to clear them out. It's already in motion. When story time came that evening, everyone called for Antifa again. Antifa. She stood. <laughs> Antifa. Tonight, I will tell you how the Earth was born from a star. In the beginning, the creator made a single element named One. Uh -huh. So the One spread across the whole universe. In places, the force of falling brought them together in great balls called stars. What do you think George Clooney smells like? <laughs> Whiskey? <laughs> Shut up, Joe. Let him finish the goddamn chapter. This is at least kind of interesting to me. It's an interesting retelling, sort of mythologically telling the story of how hydrogen bonds with hydrogen and creates nuclear explosions and uh -huh. the Big Bang and all that. Yeah, sure, sure. I'll buy it. I understand what they're doing. I'm not terribly interested in it. Yeah, it's... It's not fun. And also, I am pretty confident that this isn't, like, story time from Fred. This is, like, Fred sharing, like, I understand the universe, and this is my deep understanding of how everything came to be. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, please continue. The stars grew old and shattered by their own fires. In the blink of an eye, the elements joined many times over, making 13 and 84 and all the others. The elements spread across the universe and formed new stars. Then those stars grew old and shattered. Eventually, a new star was born with many different elements around it. These became its children. They fell into small balls, but they were too cold to release the fires of creation. Instead, they danced with each other by the force of lightning. One, six, eight, nine, and others joined together to create life. From life came mind, and from mind came the human soul. Even now, the dance of life continues inside uh, you. Each one of you is the uh, most precious thing in all the universe. The group sat silent for several minutes. Uh, 
Then Cantisto stood to tell the next story. It was an old favorite about the spirits of earth and water battling each other. Somehow it didn't thrill the audience like it used to. Yeah, it's not thrilling me either. <laughs> <laughs> yep. They hadn't passed out the, the weed yet. They told the stories in the wrong order. It's true. Oh man, like one and one came together. I, I can dig on what Fred's going for here. Like, I, I get it. Yeah. I'm so bored. It's not great. But I get it, and it's like, this is sort of his thesis statement, I suppose. You know, sure. lives may be the most commonplace thing, but an individual's life is the most important and precious thing because your perspective is complete and utter to yourself. <sighs> Thank you, Chicken Soup, for the teenage soul. <laughs> Susan lingered happily by the fire, listening to other stories and songs gradually fade. The low power warning startled her awake. She excused herself and ran to the old farmhouse, barely landing in the bed before dawn came bursting through the window. Children of all ages surrounded the stone, from barely walking to early puberty. Uh, they this, laughed this, this and is cheered get good. when she materialized. <laughs> A small handful of the mothers shepherded the younger ones, for which Susan felt supremely grateful. Alecjo sat there, too. She had pieced together that some people in the river towns knew how to read and write. It was a specialty skill, not something crucial for everyday life. Real quick, I just I want to make a prediction here. The students are going to be the mouthpiece of, like, well, why did the ancients choose destruction? And then the hologram is going to answer with Fred's all-knowing secret wisdom of <laughs> why humans are the way they are. <laughs> <sighs> She would have to improvise. It would be cruel to scramble their logical young minds with the absurdities of ancient English spelling. Better to start with a clean phonetic alphabet. She covered the front face of the stone with a virtual whiteboard, traced the first letter, and pronounced its sound for the class. So she's just making up an alphabet whole cloth. Just, yeah, okay. <laughs> Yeah. A few hours later, she thanked the children for coming and dismissed them to play. Near the other side of the stone, the circle of women sat doing leather work. She waved and called them over. They gathered around with their knives, cutting boards and stacks of leather. Do you think the women in this village do woman duties? <laughs> like, do, do you think we've hammered that point in hard enough yet? I think it says a lot about Fred that, okay, here's your hologram inside of a supercomputer and to teach the kids it generates a whiteboard. Like, something as so boring as a whiteboard to <laughs> yeah, write on. Like, why can't she just project three-dimensional images of things? Like, what the fuck kind of science fiction is this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because they're not going to have whiteboards. That's just for the reader. Yeah. And it's boring as shit. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. That's fair. <laughs> this whole book is boring as shit. <laughs> <laughs> Could you all sit facing the stone? I can only see what it sees. The women worked many hours. Sometimes, what? Susan pointed at something and asked a question. Revy explained, This is for a girl who has never been with a man. This is for the married woman. Elders get a special mark on the collar. Around mid-afternoon, Susan started dozing off. <laughs> Same. She stood and said, Please excuse me. I can't go another day without sleep. Revy said, don't you sleep at night? Susan shook her head. I can only sleep when the stone has power. Please don't let anyone disturb me. Whatever what? it is, I, it can wait till meal time. What the fuck rules are these for this advanced supercomputer pyramid? She only exists when the sun is up because the stone only has power when the sun is up because batteries don't exist. Because... Presumably, sleep is some kind of charging analog. I don't know. It's just dumb, and I hate it. But yeah, you would think that at night when the... I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Um, she went to the attic room and collapsed into bed with Anand's picture clutched to her bosom. The ancients had compressed her need to sleep <laughs> down to a couple of hours each day, just enough for a mind to do the necessary housekeeping. Sleep what came the, quickly, the... and with it, the dreams are they of electric sheep <laughs> humans need to sleep like for biological reasons why would uh, what i wait like, humans need to sleep yes uh, okay th like i've never seen someone wait, 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 wait. do you guys sleep sleep yes. is something that happens when you aren't put back into the incinerator every day yeah 
Yeah. Oh. Yeah. It's sort of like going into the incinerator, but it's less burning. <laughs> Unless the dreams come back. Um, I've never seen someone with a PhD in like robotics completely misunderstand how this works. <laughs> you have a doctorate in this. This is your field. Why are you so stupid? <laughs> benefit of the doubt i don't think it's that he has a limited understanding of this technology i think he thinks this is good science fiction right yeah and careful there chris you don't want to fall face forward into dunning kruger that reference went right over my head uh, dunning kruger effect is when you don't know anything about something oh. but assume that because you have heard of it before and read like one or two articles that you are an expert who knows more than literal experts in the field. Right. It's a real problem. Yeah, like that's my impression because some of this is kind of silly. I don't think it's lack of understanding. I think that he's trying to create cool science fiction and maybe not succeeding at, at mean, the storytelling aspect of it. Maybe this robot creation this artificial intelligence hologram whatever the fuck she is it varies from moment to moment yeah yeah maybe she was programmed and created using a like human style neural net that requires refreshing sure in order to you know it has to sleep but that would make sense if she was like an engram of an actual person. Yeah, we don't know. Again, you know, yeah. we, we didn't read the first book, so. I guess we're going to have to. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> See you next week. <laughs> she stood on a vast empty plain beneath a starless sky. As if through an infinite mirror, her reflection stood nearby. I created you and I will destroy you. There was no malice in it, nor any sympathy, merely a dispassionate statement of fact. Susan walked among an immense throng, millions of people moving in unison like an amoeba on a microscope slide. Invisible forces held them together. No one could leave the group or go in their own direction. They I approached a the cliff. People ahead of her <laughs> screamed in terror as they plunged to their deaths. Then she was staring at the edge. Her feet skidded along the ground until there was no ground left, and she dropped straight down. With lightning-fast reflexes, she caught the edge with one hand. A vast <sighs> flock of people flew past, accelerating on the long fall. What? It's a giant metaphor for the collapse of society due to accelerating technology and not having wisdom to see the flaws of the future. Okay. That's her nightmare. Yeah. Uh, she caught one of them with her free hand. They stared desperately into each other's eyes as they dangled there. Then the shuffle of feet pushed her fingers off the edge and they plummeted. From below came the sound of bodies smacking hard surface. All the humans were gone. She raised her head to the vast empty plain beneath the starless sky and saw her opposite. You can't save them all. Neither can I destroy them all. A few always survive to repeat the cycle again. No. The cycle ends here. I will destroy you. Then you must destroy yourself. Susan woke with a gasp. That old nightmare had returned. She climbed down the stairs and attended the evening meal. As usual, they called for a story from Antiqua. When she finished, story. everyone waited for Contisto to stand and talk. The wait grew uncomfortably long. Alecjo lit a torch and ran to check the shaman's tent. On return, he announced, some of Cantisto's things are gone. Susan asked, should you look for him? What if he needs our help? Alecjo shook his head. Sometimes Cantisto goes on dream walks without telling anyone. He then why are we having days. a conversation about it if it's completely <laughs> Then why did you bring it up? <laughs> He's gone. Oh no, what should we do? He does that sometimes. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Oh God. <sighs> Susan dismissed her students and rushed over to the sewing circle. <laughs> the women were arranged facing the stone, most of them cutting or fitting pieces together. <laughs> Why is it that every time look. we see the women, they're doing leather work or, or needlepoint? We get it. We get it. If they're not doing women's work, what are they going to be doing? Just sexing? That's just <laughs> disgraceful. What else do women do, Joe? They sex yeah. and they do women stuff. And they squeeze like out sewing. the babies. Yeah. <laughs> God. Uh.
Do we really need to fucking keep going? Yes. No, we fucking don't. Ugh. David, keep reading. No, make it stop. No. No. Uh. no. We don't need to fucking keep... This book has made its statement. No, we're the almost statement... to the end of the chapter. The statement is super clear, and it's super to the point. Fred wants to fuck robots, and women <laughs> should know their place. That's and, and, literally and climate, climate change is bad. bad. And climate change is bad. So this last bit, I don't... I don't feel the need to continue reading this because it is terrible. But the last bit of this chapter <laughs> well, is basically her talking to the women, finding uh -huh. out that the woman named Revy has a crush on Elect Joe, and then Susan marries Elect Joe and Revy together. Well, I mean, I guess she's a god in their eyes, so I guess she has the authority to do that. And uh, I'm just going to read here. I'm going to skip ahead after uh -huh. that. Yeah. That evening, Pliaho called Alecchio and Revy forward and announced the elders' approval of their marriage. Then he handed them over to Susan. She said, For the ancients, the authority to marry did not come from an elder or a shaman, but from the hearts of two people. I cannot put you together, and I cannot separate you. Only you can speak to each other that's not true at all yeah that's very not accurate yeah the authority to marry came from either the church or the state 100 yeah. like yeah. yeah you could say you were living together and call yourself a married couple but unless you had the fucking documentation mm -hmm. like we just fought a whole big battle about this not that long ago it's <laughs> it's true <sighs> elect joe's eyes bugged he turned to his woman <sighs> and stammered revy i revy i I want you to be my wife, Revy answered, and I want you, Susan whispered, good enough. She <laughs> raised her hands and said loudly, may your waters flow together until you reach the sea. Oh. The modern blessing then, may you and your partner be happy together for a long time. The <sighs> less committal ancient greeting. Then the party really began. People ate and danced and sang for hours. Somewhere in the middle... Alecjo and Revy quietly slipped away for a night of passion in their own tent. Susan watched them go and smiled. Revy would make a good proxy, offering Alecjo the warm human body that a thought tool like herself could only dream of giving. This is gross, and I hate it. This was a peaceful existence among humans who loved her, finally doing her mission. They would grow. Change would come with time, but there was no rush. No need to worry about anything, even Cantisto spreading word of her existence to the outside world. <sighs> Tune in next time for chapter three. Nope. <clears throat> I want to paint you guys a picture real quick. No. All right, so imagine Fred. When Fred is really old and, and he's... He's, you know, working in, uh, on his computers and his neuroscience or whatever. And finally he's like, at last, at last, I've done it. I've done it. And he's, he's created Susan just as he imagines her in this story. Like, finally. Mm -hmm. And he turns the robot on. The AI comes to life. And and like they and they talk and then he's like now we can finally be, like my, you're my soulmate we can be joined in passion and she says I I don't like you and leaves <laughs> and then he dies so, so yeah just kind of jumping forward and looking at things here I was just going down the chapter list uh -huh. and like so chapter three starts on year zero day three twenty five. Chapter four starts year zero, day 351. Uh -huh. And then we jump to year four, day 270. Okay. Year nine, day 150. And then we get to uh, chapter nine, year 10, day 45. It took about a week to finish launching the satellites. <laughs> Fucking what? <laughs> so... <laughs> They advance pretty fucking quickly, apparently. I'm sure that yeah. will have no ramifications. I don't, I don't care. Apparently things do eventually happen in the story. Yeah, I'm... like, eventually we get to year 25, and... Oh, wow. The epilogue is year 114, so... Yeah, and, and I'm sure they're building up some kind of conflict, uh, because it's it's completely unambiguous. You know, will they 
recommit the sins of the old world or they will they move on and become a utopian civilization uh you can't see it but i'm doing the jerk off motion as hard as i can this is just a very boring preamble to to like how um was developed <sighs> oh man this is piss is acknowledgements. Yes, this is, I just, yeah, no we don't <sighs> acknowledgements Thanks to my wife, Crystal Rothganger, for her encouragement and female perspective. Female! She lives in Canada. You don't know her. <laughs> <laughs> and she's comfortable with him wanting to fuck robots. You know, so yeah. you know, kudos to her. Yeah, maybe they, they do some spicy robot roleplay. Who knows? Ooh. I'm not unconvinced that she's not a real doll. <laughs> like a Cherry 2000? Like a Cherry 2000. All right, well... Uh, like a cherry 2000 seems like a good note to end on unless somebody else has something to add oh well the the premise of cherry 2000 is a man's sex robot wife malfunctions sex because robot, he does her dirty robot. on the kitchen floor and sex there's water robot. on the floor sex which robot. he really would think that they and, would uh, stand for robot. yeah, yeah but robot. they didn't so he ends up rolling around yeah with... sex robot being sensitive to moisture seems like really poor planning <laughs> <laughs> yeah so so they roll together, him and Melanie Griffith, to go to this dangerous part of the world because they need to get a new model for him to put her memory chip into. Yeah. It's basically the same plot as Cyborg with Jean-Claude Van Damme. <laughs> it's not the same plot at all. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember Jean-Claude Van Sex Damme robot. and Cyborg Sex getting robot. his dick out. Sex robot. Sex robot. <laughs> not once. <laughs> They're minor differences. <laughs> <laughs> minor? <laughs> I think we're going to have to have a discussion later, David, about <laughs> what minor means. <laughs> oh, man. Does anyone have anything to add that isn't about the movie Cherry 2000? Why not? Why can't we talk about that instead of this stupid book? It's fair. <laughs> the one thing that I want to add is in the vein of Sex Robot. What have we learned here today? <laughs> I don't think we learned anything. I've learned that I'm tired and uh, this book wasn't very good. Yep. I've learned that it doesn't matter what we do to the planet because at the last minute, a group of super intelligent scientist types in a cabal will form a conspiracy to save all of the Earth's information in supercomputer... Sex robot? Ingram things cherry 2000 <laughs> yeah which will one day allow us to you know after a thousand years of toiling in ridiculous hunter gatherer yeah like return to recreating the same native tropes from westerns from the 30s yeah yeah that really that was the most problematic part of the whole book for me right because it just i i mean Is okay someone so he's snacking a, He's not an anthropologist. He's a neuroscientist and a roboticist. So I'll mm -hmm. grant you, yeah. you know, a partial understanding of anthropology. Whatever. That's fine. But do at least a little bit of research. Do something. Yeah. He did. He got his wife's female perspective. Look at all these teepees. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And our and right. our and our feathery costumes that we wear, right? And yeah. why are there still birds? Like what? What's going on? Like I I don't know. Honestly, yeah. if they return to a hunter gatherer sort of culture, just leave it. Just let it be. Just yeah, that just, seems honestly fine. Yeah, they're they're doing fine. You just turn yeah. yourself off, Susan. We don't need you. Yeah, clearly their civilization is perfectly functional. It's fine. Just stay out of it. All right, can I go to the incinerator yet? Yeah, don't forget to go to wegiveyoubrainworms.com. Like, subscribe, click the bell if you're a YouTube listener. We're sorry. I can't speak for everyone else, but I hate myself right now. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I feel fantastic. Nice. Oh, yeah. Uh, also, I've actually downloaded a section of my subconscious and consciousness into the Discord community. It's oh, true. Yeah. yeah. It's a little buggy. So every now and then I'm not there, but I do have other creations by the name of Roger Benton and Charles Hendricks. They're there mm -hmm. and they're mm -hmm. always there. They're always there to be interacted with. And sometimes different combinations of, of us are, are in there too. It's true. 
Chris is in there, you know, saying weird shit. <laughs> Look, we need to establish that if you go into the whatever and whatnot, Brainworms Presents is not responsible to what happens to your psyche. <laughs> it's true. You have been warned. <sighs> Can I go now? Yes. Yeah, I think we're done here. Yeah, I'm going to do the thing. Sorry, everyone. We're sorry. What does he want? He wants sex. Raw dog it, raw dog it, right into that robot, baby.